All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I wanna share with you the latest news involving Bitcoin, involving regulation in the US, as well as what's happening with altcoins and much more. If you're interested in making money with cryptocurrency, click subscribe right now. We drop a video every single day demystifying this cryptocurrency market. Well, let's jump in, starting with Bitcoin. Bitcoin price analysis and overview following BTC's worst day since May. The following analysis will try to address whether or not the Bitcoin bull market is over and where the next significant support is in case a $42,000 Bitcoin breaks down. For those of you who subscribe and have the bell notifications turned on, you were with us late last night as the Bitcoin price was crashing. Today's video is very much a continuation of what we discussed yesterday in the live stream. I will link this down below for those who haven't seen it. But zooming out and looking at Bitcoin on the weekly scale, this yellow line represents Bitcoin's 21 week moving average, which as discussed yesterday has been historically important when determining whether Bitcoin is in a bull market or in a bear market. Above the 21 week moving average is bull market. Below the 21 week moving average is bear market. We've seen this over and over and over again. And yesterday, when we dipped from a $59,000 Bitcoin all the way down in a flash crash to a $41,800 BTC, even though we have leveled off, we are flirting right now with that 21 week moving average. These next seven to 10 ish days are going to be very important. If you hold Bitcoin, make sure you're following, make sure you're paying attention. And by the way, in my opinion, the most important thing to realize is this was not, was not a natural sell-off. This was a forced sell-off as over $1.79 billion worth of BTC longs were liquidated in under one hour. So leverage trading and whales playing their whale games caused this dip. Now, the good news is that because of this flush out, because all this derivative trading got flushed out of the market in under one hour, the Bitcoin futures market was overheated, but now we have had a nice healthy reset. This was it. Like right here, open interest dropped from $13.1 billion to just $9.3 billion last night, derivatives traders flushed out of the market. And let's keep moving because this next piece of data to me is pretty eye-opening. As you can see, before this nasty correction, we were seeing some weakness in the market, lower highs as well as lower lows. Well, that does bring me to the question, who was selling their Bitcoin? The on-chain data shows us that the majority of the Bitcoin sold over the last seven days, approximately 77% of that Bitcoin sold, were the Bitcoin who last moved likely bought above the 60K price range. Therefore, the primary sellers were the youngest buyers who sold at a loss. Wow. To me, this really says it all because again, and we've seen this before, new investors in this space who have weak hands are selling into those long-term investors who historically have diamond hands. Bitcoin is being transferred to long-term hodlers. And to take this one step further, some interesting perspective about this crash from long-term trader Bob Lucas. These type of events, major crashes, punish front runners convinced of up only models, right? People who don't really understand what they're investing in. These crashes have lasting impacts on sentiment and it takes time to forget the experience. In bull markets, they do serve a purpose, right? Shakeouts serve a purpose of shaking the weak handed individuals, investors out and transferring Bitcoin to the long term hodlers. On another note, we tend to forget the past. In 2017, we had four drops of 30% or more. So drops in the market are nothing new, right? Even five steps forward and four steps back is still one step forward. Let me know what you think down below in the video comment section. Comment right now. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? What are your thoughts? And next up, before we talk altcoins, I do have some good news for you. The country of El Salvador stacks another 150 Bitcoin after BTC price crashes below 50K. So the nation of El Salvador bought the dip again. Here was that direct tweet from the president. El Salvador just bought the dip 150 coins at the average price of about 
$48,670 per coin, hashtag Bitcoin. And this is the perfect example of a buy the dip dollar cost average strategy because $48,000 was not the bottom by any means. It was actually a $42,000 Bitcoin, as we've just discussed. And you're never gonna catch the exact bottoms, just like you'll never catch the exact tops. And in fact, the president of El Salvador tweeted in levity, missed the effing bottom by seven minutes. Obviously a little joke, but it just goes to show you the buy the dip dollar cost average mindset is even being implemented by nation states pretty wild. Okay, let's talk Theta, let's talk Polkadot, let's talk regulation in the US. But real quick, I do want to take 60 seconds and give a big shout out to sponsor of the channel, OKCoin. A better way to Bitcoin, join the fastest growing global cryptocurrency exchange with the lowest fees around. So while this is a global cryptocurrency exchange, they are regulated in the US, which I like. And it's true that they do have much lower fees than other crypto exchanges out there. To understand how that's possible, I will link our 18 minute interview with OKCoin's head of listing. He goes into detail why OKCoin is the better option. Link down below, check it out. And the final two things I'll mention, which I think are important to you, is they not only have the top coins, the most popular coins on their exchange, but they also have newer coins as well as metaverse coins listed on their exchange as well, which I like. And number two, OKCoin also has 100% fee staking, so you keep 100% of all staking rewards earned. There is a link down below, Altcoin Daily OKCoin, link down below, check it out. And next up, do we have any Theta hodlers in the audience? Because Katy Perry's first ever NFT drop the Roar package is coming soon to Theta. So what this means is that even though prices are dropping in the short term, this is a big green flag for the viability of these crypto projects in the long term. In fact, it's not just Katy Perry using Theta, it's the World Poker Tour as well. Introducing World Poker Tour Series 2 NFTs featuring the queens of the Felt Legendary Pack collect and celebrate moments from iconic women throughout the World Poker Tour history, of course, all on Theta. Pretty cool. Next up, what's happening with Polkadot? Polkadot's third parachain slot auction winner is Astar. Astar. So the third parachain slot has been decided. Astar Network, which is a multi-chain dApp hub, was actually previously known as Plasm Network, and ASAR, ASTAR supports Ethereum, DAP staking, and Layer 2 solutions. They have won the third slot, and they will be onboarded with the first five winners on December 18th. So there are two more slots to be filled before the first five are onboarded. And the reason ASTAR was chosen is because enough of the Polkadot community chose to contribute to the crowd loan, lock up their DOT for two years, and support the project to win a parachain. The first winner was the DeFi platform Aqua Network. The second winner was the Moonbeam Network. And of course, number three is Astar Astar. Let me know down below who you think will get the fourth and fifth slot of this first batch. It will be decided in the next two weeks. And next up, big piece of news for crypto regulation in the US. Exchange FTX releases crypto regulation proposals before their US congressional hearing, which is coming up. And this was shared shortly after Maxine Waters, the chair of the House Committee on Financial Services for US Congress, invited several CEOs of major crypto firms to testify on the topic of digital assets and the future of finance. So these crypto exchange CEOs will be testifying very, very soon in front of Congress, at least a specific committee, and in preparation for that, FTX made their thoughts public. Out of the 10 key principles, one of the recommendations calls for an alternative regulatory approach that proposes a unified regulatory regime for spot and derivatives marketplaces, which I love. They're saying, why should every different exchange have different rules? Let's just have a basic list for all of us so we know what the rules are. On top of that, FTX also explains the need for a direct membership market structure, i.e. allowing entities to perform regulated trades without the involvement of a third party, which is good. Take the third party out of it. I like that. 
And finally, the exchange also suggests a regulation demanding greater transparency around the custodians of crypto assets, arguing that the platform users should be given visibility into how custodial services plan to address concerns related to fraud and theft. So they're saying for all custodians of crypto assets like exchanges, give transparency to the people, make that a standard in this industry. We will have to see how this plays out. Again, the, the official live testimonials testifying in front of Congress, I believe is this week, if not very, very soon, but we will see. And that is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.